Okay, today we're going to learn about the standard deviation. And for those of you who've seen some of the previous videos, you know one of the things that I use is Tesla's stock, uh, Tesla historical data, this table right here. Um, you've probably seen in previous videos, I think the mean, median, and mode, I used that. Um, <clears throat> but I want to do the standard deviation. Now, T sequel comes with a function called STDEV, and we can get the standard deviation of the price right off the bat. As you can see, um, this right here, um, we don't even have to do any function. However, I want to show you kind of how to calculate the standard deviation um, using a common table expression because it'll it'll show you how, um, especially with more complex algorithms, how you can use a combination of common table expressions and um, variables and passing in dates and times and maybe even symbols too as well uh, to automate this. Um, that way, especially if if we have data like I have, for instance, <clears throat> a lot of companies will store stock data in one table. And I actually did a test today to see my approach to stock data is each symbol gets its own table. So you have like Tesla historical data and then that will be under the database of New York Stock Exchange. And then you'll have the Australian Stock Exchange and so on and so forth. Well, my approach to storing data is eight times faster than dumping it all into a table. And that's like with just, that's the, the time frames that I'm using, let's say millions of rows versus, you know, uh, each stock may only have five or 6,000 rows of data, right? I mean, a, a stock with a long history might have maybe 10,000 rows of data. That's, that's a long time, actually. Um, but most stocks won't. Well, my approach is a lot faster at this point. And as I get to billions of records, even though I think my database at that time will get too big, I will share with you all what I've found. But so far, what I've found is that having it as each symbol having its own table is a lot better approach to storing the data than what most companies do. So I want to show you kind of how to automate some things because algorithms like the one, this one that we're, we will be working with are going to be a lot more effective for us as far as um, manipulating data because you'll notice that <clears throat> the only part of this table right here, if we were going to automate this query, we could make this all dynamic SQL. You see this historical data, this Tesla historical data here, 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 and here. Everything else is automatically set, right? The average is set, the begin is set automatically by a min and a max. Uh, the average, of course, is the average. So the only thing that we would be passing in here in our function, and this is just using the standard deviation as an example, is the symbol. Outside of that, this whole um, common table expression with query is going to get all the data for us. So we're declaring an average as decimal 11.4 because it's an average. Then we're declaring a de begin as a date variable and an end as a date variable. We're setting the begin to the minimum date from the historical data. We're setting the end to the maximum date from historical data. Then we're selecting our average, the average price value from historical data where the date is between the begin and the end. Now, for those of you who've done the standard deviation, I'm about to show you the steps. I'm breaking it down. Again, there's that convenient function for us to use. We can use that and skip a bunch of steps. This step-by-step -step breakdown is to help you um, come up with a way to build functions when you're developing advanced algorithms. And so this is just using a, a simple standard deviation as an example of some of the cool stuff that you can do. And I think we've already done some of that with some of the, I think we looked at some historical stock data about, and I'll have to go back and check, but I think we've looked at like um, looking at stock data when it's below the 200 a simple moving average and what it is, let's say, 100 days later. That's an algorithm if you think about it. That's this is where it's at, this is where the price is, and we're trying to predict something off of that. This is just simply the standard deviation. Okay, so we're going to make a common table expression, and the common table expression, of course, starts with the, um, the semicolon with the table's name is standard deviation as. We're going to select the date. Now we're going to do step one. The step one on standard deviation is we are going to take each value and we're going to subtract each value from the average. So each price minus the average which is found up here. That's going to be step one. Step two, we then square the price minus the average, right? So each of those values is going to be squared. So that you'll notice is our common table expression and again it has the same time frame as our average does, begin and end. That doesn't change. So if I add more, notice if I add more data to my table, this doesn't change here, right? Okay, then we're going to look at uh, step three, which we're going to take the average of step two. So we've taken the square root of each um, 
price minus the average, then we've squared those that value, and now we're going to take the average of all of those values. And then the final step on standard deviation is we then take the square root of the average of step two, this final step. So this will only build out, uh, show you step three and final step, because as you probably can guess, there's multiple values. There's 598 values for each of these. This is more of an aggregated one. So there's step three, which I believe is called the variance, and there's a standard deviation. Don't quote me on the variance. It's been a while since I've taken statistics, but um, I believe the variance is what you get before you get the standard deviation. And then like the Z, the Z score is the individual value. Um, I think it's, what is it? The individual value minus uh, the standard deviation divided by something or something like that. The Z score is an individual value. So their standard deviation is 29. Or I take that back, it's um, it's plus or minus. Because usually an outlier would be the average plus 3.5 standard deviations would be a, a big outlier. And a negative outlier would be the average minus 3.5 standard deviations. So as a case in point, um, Hold on a second, what was the average up here? And again, this is off the top of my head. I can look it up really fast, but I'm not going to. So for instance, Tesla stock is 160 right now, I think around there, don't quote me on that, because um, I don't want people trading off of what I say. So if we say, so 41 is the average, so if we say 41 uh, times 3.5 is 143. So 160, um, if the stock price is 160, that is the stock price relative to the average and the standard deviation now, notice that's only now, the stock price would be a positive outlier. Um, or it would be above um, that. Now, of course, there's all kinds of asterisks by that because that, again, there's, there's the, um, what is that? It assumes a normal distribution, which a stock is almost never a normal distribution. Um, it assumes a lot there. So that is an example of how we can calculate something like the standard deviation. Sorry, I was really thirsty. Um, so that is how we can calculate something like the standard deviation. Now, let's suppose that we developed an algorithm uh, that we needed to use the standard deviation. Again, I can't stress this enough. I would go with this. Simple, straightforward, don't need any, need any extra. Um, any extra work. But let's suppose we had a, a complicated algorithm that we were, for instance, what I was doing, um, let's say earlier today, I was using savings data and I was trying to predict bank earnings nine months later. So what I was trying to see is depending on the savings rate, if it's within a certain percentage or above a certain percentage, does that predict that a bank's earning is going to be above a certain amount of billions? Um, you know, I mean, some people might think that's kind of you know absurd or bizarre but it is true that as Americans have more in savings as a case in point and I've seen this in Texas because Texas has very cheap real estate and we have no income tax so Texas as a state favors earning more money as opposed to spending more money because um, we also have a sales tax so we kind of punish the spenders well that leads to a kind of some unintended results in that people as they work more and save more, they end up buying real estate. They're more likely to buy real estate because as you build up more of a savings, uh, for instance, a down payment on a home is very reasonable. So you can look at if Americans start saving more overall, our bank earnings, you know, how many months later is a sweet, sweet spot or how many quarters later is a sweet spot, can we use savings to predict what the earnings of the banks are going to be? And for instance, in Texas, that's one of the reasons why Texas didn't have the housing bubble that other states did, or some other states did, I should say. And it's because partially Texas has very cheap real estate. But the other part of that is we as a state favor earning more money and we punish spenders. So the result of that is that people are more likely to put money in savings and then have, you know, twenty or thirty thousand dollars when they're ready to buy a home. Um, that leads to that behavior. So you could look at you know, states that have uh, no income taxes and a high consumption tax, and that might predict what the real estate's going to do. So anyway, 
Uh, that's just some of the things we can do, and we can build algorithms. But as you can see, and I'm, I'm using the standard deviation because for those of you, you can look it up on Wikipedia and you can verify, oh yeah, that's how that's calculated. Um, now think about any algorithm you want to do, and you can do it step by step like this if you want to show your work to yourself and prove that you uh, have done things. But this right here will show you how you can go about um, calculating various algorithms on your data.